do you feel like you just don't know enough as a coach? Or maybe right now you're getting tons of certifications, but just nothing's breaking through in your business. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to bust past this, how to deliver more influence and create a bigger income. Stay tuned. <laughs> The most powerful belief that holds people back from creating results in their life, and especially coaches, is they feel like they're not good enough. Okay. And in one video, I talked about this, you know, how coaching through our experiences is really what it comes down to. But I'm going to give you a different perspective. One of the things that coaches have to realize is that they are giving people powerful beliefs and powerful actions to follow in their life. And one of the things that my coach has said to me years ago, he said, your clients will be the average of you in all ways. And so one of the things I was doing at that point in time, I was working like 16, 18 hour days. And he said, do you want your clients to be working 16, 18 hour days? And I said, no. He said, well, then why are you? And it really hit me as like, yeah, you know what, I, I wouldn't want someone to have to give their entire life and sacrifice, you know, their living in order to run this business. And so it really changed my mind about how I started to run my business. And it really changed moving forward because I was able to get done in, in uh, what I used to take 16 hours. Now it takes me eight hours. And one of the reasons why is I really started to look at my behaviors and my patterns and what I was doing every single day. He said, and one of the things that he said to stuck out, which inspired me to change my behaviors and patterns, he said, you will pass on more genes to your clients than a mom will pass on genes to her own children. And I thought about that for a second and I thought, yeah. You know, that's true. And I know this sounds ludicrous to even say, but it is true. There's a term called epigenetics. And if you haven't researched it, do it now. Epigenetics means above genetics. And what epigenetics essentially means is our behaviors, our patterns, our beliefs, our actions, everything that we do could turn off a gene or it can turn on a gene that we've been born with. Okay, cancer, diabetes, okay, some of these genes exist in our bodies, but if someone is laying around and not doing anything, that gene is going to be much more likely to express ourselves and affect us. Okay, and then let's look at the contrast. Someone who's uh, really active, eats good, okay, and they have that gene, it's not going to be expressed, so they won't have to worry about it. Okay, so our patterns and behaviors are something that's learned. And so when someone says, well, Diabetes runs in my family. It's like, no, dude, no one runs in your family, man. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem of why you are struggling right now is you're blaming it on your genes when really it comes down to you. And so you as a coach, you are passing on genes to your clients. Okay. And maybe some of the clients you're working with, maybe they never had a mom and dad, or maybe it was grandpa and grandma that was raising, or maybe it was aunts, or maybe they just didn't have a good relationship with their mom and dad. You don't realize how much influence that you really have over a person. So when someone comes to me and said, well, I just don't know if I'm good enough to be a coach. You're right. You're not good enough to be a coach because no coach would ever enter a space thinking that they're not good enough. They would step in with absolute certainty that they have a message that can change the world and change the lives of millions of people. And if you believe that you're not good enough, then yeah, get the hell out of this coaching realm. Okay. We don't need coaches out there passing on genes to people that don't believe they're good enough. Now, not to get this mistake with short term, like I'm doubting myself or I don't think I'm good enough. That's completely different, guys. We all go through that. But if you consistently feel that you're not good enough and maybe this isn't right for you and you're consistently having those feelings of doubt and you're not doing anything about it and you're just sitting there, yeah, you shouldn't be in the coaching realm. Okay. Coaches, every single, I remember I was sitting down with my friend one day and we have different philosophies of thinking. He's more mind focused mindset. And I'm like, yeah, it's the body and the mind, but the body actually has more influence than the mind does. Okay. 
and we can that's a whole other topic that we can talk about i have other videos um that talk about that but he said to me he's like i feel like i'm one of the greatest coaches out there and i thought about it for a second thinking no you're not motherfucker i am <laughs> but that's the competitive side of me but i thought about it, i was like you know what you should feel that way you should feel like you're one of the best out there and if you don't then what are you doing Okay, what are you doing? So you should feel like what you have is so utterly amazing and, it, and it's not your information. It's not what you know, guys. Okay, it's not what you know. And in fact, some of the best coaches have actually learned how to be a coach. Okay, like uh, example, Bill Belichick. Like he was never a great football player. Hell, he didn't even play college, college football, but he's by far one of the best football players coaches of all time because he's learned the craft okay he's experienced what a coach does i mean he's been coaching for 40 years that's a long time to be coaching and so one of the things i would really look at is not what information you know okay but what things have you learned along the way okay we've all have gone through steps in our life right and so looking back so let's say you're on this step okay up here head's a little cut off right there so we're on this step. What big steps have you made? What big, what's changed in your mind and what's changed in your body? And when I say body, I don't mean what does your body look like, uh, but it could for some uh, personal trainers out there. Body, I mean like, what do you do differently? What's your, what's your belief and what do you do? Okay. And really write this down with different parts of your life and different builds up. So this could be you know, your steps in real estate could be your steps as far as coaching goes. Okay. What does this represent for you? Okay. And then I would really lay it out of all the things that you've really went through and what were some pivotal things that you worked on or did during that time. Okay. Maybe you could say, oh, I went to an event right here that really changed my life. Okay. Then I hired a coach. And the one thing that I learned through hiring a coach was this, right? And then I went to another big event, right? And then at that period of time, I started to hire team members. Okay. And then right here, I'm scaling. Okay. And I, and I hired these coaches. Now, when we start to look back on all the steps that we've essentially done, okay, when we look back on those and you put those down, now it's like, okay, what would my client need now? What steps does my client need in order to go to the next level? And so I had to really think about this. Is it online programs? Is it in-person, one-on-one? Okay, is it events? I love doing events. I believe events are the most transformational thing that any coach can do. Okay, so much... Um, in our world today, people are going online, which is great. I think everyone should have online programs. However, real transformation is done being to being, okay? So is it is it a retreat you went on? What was the steps that really led to your success? And so once you start to look at these things, go, how would I deliver these into a program, okay? How would I put these together? And so the more clear we're on what we're offering, Okay, as far as programs go, the more likely we are to create transformation in people's lives. So let me give you three categories that I want you to think about. So we grow at different levels. Okay, I tell people we grow just by doing our own work. Okay, meditation, reading, writing down stuff. Then we grow, the next level is we grow one on one with a coach. Okay, we're with our coach, they help take us through a breakthrough process or a meditation or they give us a strategy or they help overcome a situation that happened, okay, whatever it might be. And then the next level is a small group, okay, about 10, 50, or about 5 to 15 people. We're still having a more intimate conversation. We're able to dive deeper. And then we grow with big events, big people. So I always tell everyone, incorporate all three of those into your program. So that way you're, you're applying the best of all worlds. So again, it's the one-on-one, -on -one, okay. The second one is the small group. And then lastly, it's the large group. Okay, so I'd really think about those. And at the end of the day, you have to allow for intuition to come in. Okay, maybe I should apply in one program these two, and then the next program apply these two. 
Okay, so I'd really look at that. Okay, on, and how those and really start to get a game plan of really what you're offering people. What would be so cool? And one of the things that we really teach people is what is next gen? Okay, what is next gen as far as putting programs together? And when I mean next gen, what's unique? What's different? What what are people not doing that you can do in your programs? Maybe it's bringing in other coaches. Maybe it's uh, selling tickets to someone else's events. Okay, maybe it's offering this, which adds to your program, whatever it might be. Okay, so I want you to really focus and really think about that on how you could add in other things to make what you're doing so much better. Okay, and in my next video, I'm going to talk about once you've got this all put together, I'm going to like, okay, now how do we market this? How do we really get it out there and get people wanting what we have? Okay, so check out that video. Anyways, thanks for joining guys. Be inspired in what you're doing. Be next gen, and again, the world needs you. I have spoken.